Hello there and welcome to 3RW.com.au's preview of the 2013 Melbourne Cup. We're about to go through the entire 24 horses for tomorrow's great race. I'm Shane McGuinness. Sam McClure is here with me. Sam, it's that time of year again and what a race it's going to be tomorrow. Absolutely, Shane. As everyone's been talking about, you remember former soccer legend Michael Owen even said it at Werribee, it's probably the most even and open Melbourne Cups of all time. Well, let's get straight into it. We're now joined by Sky Racing commentator and 3AW's racing expert, Andrew Bensley. And Andrew, let's get straight into it. We start with Juna Den, the 2011 winner of the Melbourne Cup, as Sam just mentioned, carrying the top weight tomorrow, 58 and a half kilos. And I think the last horse to carry 58 and a half kilos to victory at the Melbourne Cup was way back in 1975. Can Juna Den do it tomorrow? I think that he'll struggle. Uh, Mikel Del Zongles, the trainer, uh, telling me that uh, he's concerned by that weight. Uh, the top weight in the race always finds it tough. He's certainly got, he's uh, fresh in his action, he's very bright and well, but uh, I think the connections are concerned with the weight, considering they're meeting some very good quality horses down in that 54, 54 and a half uh, uh, weight bracket. So I think it'll battle tomorrow to make it to uh, Melbourne Cup wins. Andrew, we go to last year's winner, Green Moon, who surprised so many, carries an extra four kilos this year with 57 and a half. What have you made of his recent form? form you would say is mixed he needs to be racing better than what he was last year given that he's gone up in weights for his melbourne cup win of 12 months ago interesting gear change blinkers going on first time uh, lloyd williams deciding that on saturday his cox plate run was fair uh, but he'll really appreciate the flemington track you can't really mount but i doubt he's going equally as good as last year. Red Cato lines up for his third Melbourne Cup, starting from Barrier 23, the runner-up to Junidan in 2011. Red Cato's chances? Look, I reckon he's a roughie at 50 to 1. Ed Dunlop uh, has been talking it up. He's been really happy with the way he's seen the horse since arriving here in the past few days. He bowled up some nice work on uh, Monday morning. I, I wouldn't rule him out of being somewhere in the finish. Uh, he's a good 50 to 1 for me. Absolutely a good roughy. Andrew, what about Seamoon, one of the Lloyd Williams horses coming off a win in the Herbert Power at Caulfield? He drops three kilos from there. He's a classy stayer. He is. If you go off the international rankings, he's the highest ever uh, rated horse in the world that we've seen here race consistently and uh, now owned by Lloyd Williams. For mine, I think he's the best of the Lloyd Williams hopes, not by far over Seville, which we'll talk about. But Seamoon hasn't raced for a few weeks. Don't be worried by that. He's putting some nice gallons, particularly at Bendigo and Mount Macedon. He's going to be sitting right on the pace like a few of Lloyd's. And I think he's probably, as I say, the best of Lloyd's hopes on Tuesday. Brown Panther is owned by an English Premier League superstar in Michael Owen. Not expected to have a problem over the distance, uh, Brown Panther, Andrew? No, it had a little bit of a hiccup prior to coming out to Melbourne. Uh, he got a bug and missed out on running in the Iris and Ledger. Uh, he did have a preparation run at Goodwood before leaving, uh, which was only over 2,000 metres. They made him the leader, which is unusual, but they wanted to give him a testing run. So you can probably forget his last run. Uh, he's, he's been sprightly in his action at Werribee. And Michael Owen, you've heard about over the weekend that he gave up his soccer career to be here in Melbourne for the Cup. He's, a, he's, a, he's sort of in... He may finish top ten. Andrew, this horse doesn't need too much of an introduction. Fiorente, outright favourite, strong runs in the Turnbull and the Cox Plate. Is this finally Gay's year? I think it is. I think that Fiorente uh, was a little bit forgotten over the weekend uh, going into the barrier draw simply because he wasn't there racing on Saturday. Um, I, I, I just feel that this horse has not missed an absolute beat since being and flashing home in last year's Melbourne Cup. Uh, I saw him at Gay Stables on Sunday. Uh, he certainly seems to have taken no effect off that run in the Cox Plate, which was unorthodox because we'd never seen the horse sitting up outside the leader in his races here in Australia. But if he gets that perfect run, which I expect from the draw with Damien Oliver... I think that uh, Fia Rende wins the Melbourne Cup for Gay and all its owners. And is the clear favourite going into tomorrow. Fortella is one of two runners for trainer Chris Waller tomorrow. Is there a question mark over the distance for Fortella? 
there probably is. Um, he he was weighing up whether to run in the Cox Plate. They did that. His run wasn't too bad. From the draw, what they'll probably do is just try and get into a position of not using any energy. Uh, you coming across, getting some cover. You'll probably see him midfield or uh, the second half of the field and allowing. He's got a very good burst of speed for two or three hundred metres. They'll be saving that for as long as possible in the Melbourne Cup this year. Andrew Dan Dino, my favourite horse of the carnival, let me say, stormed home in the Caulfield <laughs> Cup in American-esque fashion, might I say. Gee, it's got some excitement about it. You think it'll be right there in the finish if it can just settle down uh, midfield somewhere? Yeah, Sam, he's my uh, runner-up to Fiorente. Uh, he has not missed a beat. There was some talk uh, just over a week ago that uh, out of the Caulfield Cup, the horse had had a few issues, but I uh, look talking to the trainer, Marco Body and also uh, Darren Dance from the owner group. Uh, this horse hasn't missed a beat. Saw him at Werribee uh, on uh, Cup Eve Monday morning. He bowled around beautifully. He's got that acceleration. And like Fiorente, and like Polanski, if I can sell mm. it that way, Polanski did no work in the derby on Saturday. I see that Fiorente and Dandino are going to do no early work from their barriers, and they'll be, they'll be uh, one and two as far as I'm concerned in the Cup. Ethiopia finished last in last year's Melbourne Cup after suffering an injury mid-race. Finished fourth in the Lexus Stakes on Saturday and really finished the race strongly. Yeah, look, back to Flemington is the only thing that you can say that he's some sort of chance of finishing top ten. I can't see him getting into the placings. Um, a little way, he's living off that uh, derby win in Sydney. Uh, but, look, he's a stayer. The only thing I can say is that he, he might run well because he's at Flemington, the big spaces track, but I can't see him winning it. Faulkner, Andrew, another Lloyd Williams horse, Caulfield Cup winner, of course. Feel like this horse has the class to be there right at the end, but as we all know, so few horses, only 11, in fact, have won the Caulfield and the Melbourne Cup in, in the same season. Well, look, we had a question mark over the horse at 2,400 metres, and he was given a gun run by Nick Hall to win the Caulfield Cup. He then uh, hasn't raced since. He's done preparation gallops at Mount Macedon. Uh, Lloyd Williams feels that Caulfield Cup form is normally pretty good, and he's hoping that Faulkner just gets the similar run to the Caulfield Cup that he can just come and pounce late in the straight. He's the, certainly a top 10 chance. The third of six horses for Lloyd Williams is Murray and has the longest odds in the field, a 100 to one shot. Really disappointing run in the McKinnon on Saturday. Yeah, they've taken the blinkers off. He wanted to reef and tear a little bit there on Saturday. Um, yeah, look, for mine, I can't see it. Brenton Abdullah's first ever ride in the Melbourne Cup, so a huge thrill for him. But uh, Moran, who could easily take up the pace, he could be the, one of the leaders early part of the race, uh, I can't see him winning. Seville, a lot to like about this horse, Andrew. Winner of the Metropolitan, Huey Bowman, really impressed with its Cox Plate run. Uh, it's got so much class, you feel like it's been set for the Cup as well, don't you? You do. 12 months ago, uh, he ran so well in a Turnbull. He was being set towards last year's Melbourne Cup as one of the main hopes. Uh, he went out due to injury, missed the Cup. He's been aimed towards this. Uh, he's my second pick of the six of Lloyd Williams, just, just behind Seamoon. Hugh Bowman will be able to give the horse a gun run again from barrier nine. He's certainly one of those top four or five chances for mine. Mark Kavanagh has just the one runner in the Melbourne Cup, that being super cool. Didn't have one of his best runs in the Cox Plate. Starts right in the middle of the field with barrier 13. Yeah, look... Um does he run two mile? Well, they're all going to run two mile, but who runs is the quickest is the, is the key to it all. Um, yeah, look, I, I battled to see if Super Cool can, can be amongst it. He, he ran OK in the Cox Plate, but I don't know whether he's a true two miler. What about Masked Marvel, Andrew? Let me, let me ask you. He beat Brown Panther and Sea Moon in the 2011 St. Ledger. Second last in the Cox Plate, but you can probably forgive that run. You feel like it's going to appreciate the extra distance and perhaps also the Flemington track. Flemington track will be a plus. He didn't get around Mooney Valley in the Cox Plate. He uh, went around uh, the bends really awkwardly. Um, he's, he's, he, look, if he produces his European form, yeah, I can say he's, he's going to be in the finish. I, I, I'm just a bit unsure 
I think that he's not in the top three or four of Lloyds going into the race. One of the highlights yesterday out at Werribee, Andrew, was when Dr. Marwan Kukash declared Mount Athos uh, will win the Melbourne Cup, drawn barrier 22, <laughs> Luca Kumani's only runner. Will it win the Melbourne Cup, Andrew? I think it's uh, it's in my... Well, it's third pick in mine. Um, he hasn't missed a beat uh, since he's arrived. Uh, he just bowls around behind a, a lead horse or sits in front of the lead horse. Craig Williams is the key here. They had Ryan Moore on last year. Uh, Craig Williams goes on. He's a local jockey. Yeah, he's going to be flashing hard. He's uh, uh, Look, for Lucas' sake, I hope he wins because he deserves one in all the years he's come, but... Yeah, he'll be in the finish for sure, Matt Athos. Luca Kamani certainly does deserve one. What about Royal Empire? Outstayed Red Cadeau three starts ago, over 2,700. Drawn well with Barrier 11. Has he got the class to contend? Yeah, if you listen to uh, Saeed Bin Saror and Kieran McAvoy, who's ridden the horse a few times since it's been here, uh, it's got a beautiful turn of speed. Again, it's going to get a similar run like a Seville, Dandino, Fiorente. It uh, shows that turn of speed... At the vital stage, at that 300-metre mark, it can certainly be in the finish. It's, it's, uh, it was a baby 12 months ago, but the horse has really grown into some good form. The toughest one for Greg Miles to get his mouth around tomorrow will be Veloos de Coeur. Uh, Andrew, impressed in Ireland throughout the year. One uh, in its last start at the Irish St. Ledger. Chances tomorrow? Uh, look, owned by Australian interests that are based here out of China, Eliza Park International. They were all at Werribee on Cup morning, uh, Cup Eve morning. Terribly excited. If I can put one strange thing across, when you see a horse have a sand roll, if he rolls all the way over, it's meant to tell you that the horse is fitting well. He did that on Monday morning. So... Yeah, for mine, he's, he, he can finish in the top ten. A complete sand, a complete sand roll. I love that. <laughs> yeah, Hawkspur, another Chris Waller horse, ran into a fair bit of trouble uh, in the Caulfield Cup, where he finished seventh. But gee, his last two hundred metres was as good as any horse in the race, wasn't it? It was. Uh, he's uh, certainly in my top four or five. Hawkspur got a bit forgotten out of the Caulfield Cup because he obviously didn't win it, but he got held up back on the inside. His last 150 metres was the, one of the strongest finishes in the race. Uh, he's certainly there. He gets a. He'll get into the midfield, second half of the field, but he does have a good turn of speed from a local point of view. Hawkesburg can win the Melbourne Cup. The tough Irish stayer Simonon is number 19 on the order of entry. Should be confident across this distance, the 3,200 metres. Yeah, look, he's, he, he doesn't do uh, a track work at Werribee. Every morning he just comes out, he'll uh, do ca- three canters of the Werribee track, and that's about 1,600 metres roughly. So three of those, he'll do it every morning. It's not too hard, but he just does it comfortably. He's certainly a chance in the race for sure. He's a dead set two miler. Uh, that won't be an issue come the end of the race on Tuesday. Ibachenko, trained by Peter Moody, Luke Nolan on board, hasn't had a lot of support from the punters, but is coming off a Geelong Cup win, which of course Juna Den did in 2011 before winning the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, look, I know the boys from OTI Racing, uh, Simon O'Donnell and Terry Henderson, uh, aren't ruling it out, but the Geelong Cup form this year was way down on previous years. Uh, I can't see it finishing in the first half of the field. Verima has had a good lead-up to the Cup, considered well-credentialed for tomorrow. Yeah, look, I think that uh, she's the one that's getting a few tips that are starting to get to her now. Uh, She's been very low-key at Werribee. She's just... uh, She's a mare uh, in our terms that she gets the head down, she carries it quite low in a gallop, so it'll be interesting to see how she does that on Tuesday. But uh, she does again like Simonon, just quietly, quietly ticking over. Elaine Dupre uh, watched her work on uh, Monday morning and really was um, just walked away eating a egg and bacon burger and uh, was quite smiley. So if you, if you watch the body approach, they're quite happy with Verima. Yeah, she's certainly got under the radar. What about Dear Demi? Third in the Caulfield Cup, an enormous run in the McKinnon where it stormed home late to finish second. Its recent form has really been impressive. I mean, its, it's, it's form going into the race is as good as any other horses. Yeah, look, um, fourth pick for mine. Uh, from an Australian point of view, Hawkesburg and uh, Dear Demi are the ones. Dear Demi, I think that uh, um, she's just going to get... Look, Chris Bunt's got off on Saturday... 
and said, I know that's the first time I've ridden that, but she needed that run. So if you listen to a top jockey like Chris Munch, who has won the race previously on Jezebel, dear Demi for mine's got to be in it. And how about this, guys? When Jezebel won with Chris Munch aboard, uh, carried saddle cloth number 22 at barrier 16 and had to carry 51 kilos. Exactly what Chris Munch has to do on Tuesday, just on a different horse. Very interesting. They say history never repeats. <laughs> uh, Gay Waterhouse has the favourite, as we mentioned, in Fiorente. She also has Trey Blue uh, as her other runner. Uh, the French mare has a consistent record. How does it go tomorrow? Yeah, Tommy Berry got off on Monday morning and said that uh, this horse has just enjoyed its work uh, since arriving. In fact, they gave it a bit extra on Monday morning, Cup Eve, because uh, the horse was bounding around within the mounting yard and, and was quite fresh. So they had to do a bit extra. Um, it'll go forward with the next horse, the last horse we talk about, Rossello. Uh, they'll be sitting right up on the pace. Uh, is it seasoned enough? Maybe the 2014 Melbourne Cup. Finally, Andrew, the last runner in the Melbourne Cup, Rossello, as you say, the Lexus Stakes winner. Last-minute decision, really, from Ed Walker to run him. Is the step up in class too much? Um, maybe. Uh, it's still... Look, Saturday's run was a bit of a sit and sprint, so certainly it wasn't a hard-taxing Lexus win. Uh, the only thing that, in my mind, goes against it is barrier 24. They won't change the riding pattern. It'll go forward. It's... Look, it's a long straight from the two-mile start to the first turn. Uh, it's a long way. So he's got ground to get there, but I just feel that um, using that up early is going to be the question mark at the end of the race. All 24 horses, we've gone through them. Now the moment of truth, you're one, two, and three for tomorrow's Melbourne oh, Cup. This is tough. Gee, I could give you the top six or seven, <laughs> Shane. Uh, I'm going Fiorente, uh, I, I say from an Australian point of view here, because uh, now trained, of course, by Racing's First Lady, Fiorente to beat Mount Athos number 15, Dandino 8, and Dear Demi 22. And as I say, Sea Moon and Hawkespur are certainly worth throwing in. I know uh, your listeners will be uh, will be having bets, uh, platies. I'd certainly be having Quinellas and Trifectas about all of those runners. You're the best in the business from Sky Racing. Andrew Bensley, Fiorente from Mount Athos, Dandino and Dear Demi. Andrew, look forward to hearing you on 3AW right throughout the week. Thanks, boys. Have a great cup day. On you, Andrew. Andrew Bensley from Sky Racing. We've got his tip, Sam. Now I'm over to truth. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. Your one, two, three, mm. maybe an outsider, maybe a sentimental hopeful for tomorrow. Right, sentimental. Uh, look, I've spent days looking at this form, and I initially cut it down to 17, and I thought I'd just back 17 so horses each way. So you went from 24 down to 17. Yeah, That's not and, much of a cut. And that took me six hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've got it down to four. I think that the 2013 Melbourne Cup winner will be Dan Dino to win from Seville, Juna Den is my horse as a Ruffy. It's funny that it's a, a past winner is now a Ruffy at $41. I think it will run third, and I think Mount Athos for Luca Kamani will storm home for fourth. I can't even fit in Fiorente. Uh, and, that, and that's what I find interesting. I don't have Fiorente winning. Um, I've got Mount Athos winning. Uh, I, I like the confidence of Dr. Marwan right. Kukash. Uh, he's inspired me. He, has. he says it's going to win. I'm taking him at its word. I think Juna Den, the way Luca Kamani talked up rival horse yesterday. Uh, I think it'll be first to carry that weight uh, in more than 30 years to victory. And let's just remind everyone that two years ago at Werribee, the Sunday before the Melbourne Cup, Luca Kamani was asked who was the biggest mm. ruffie of the field. He said, quote, I can't believe that Red Cadeau is at the odds that it is. Now, uh, from memory, it was paying $50 to $1. Yep. Um, and it lost by probably the shortest margin in the history of the race to Juna Den. So, Luca Kamani, when, when he tips a horse, you take notice. So, i got Mount Athos from Juna Den, Fiorente, and uh, I reckon if you want a sentimental bet tomorrow, get on Rossello. I, uh, Rossello? I think the fact Ed Walker wasn't initially confident that it would run. The connection said, nah, we're getting a Melbourne Cup. We're paying up here. And I love the fact that Chad Schofield 
is on the back mm. of Rossello. Of course, the apprentice jockey, just 19 years of age, took Seamus Award to victory in the Cox Plate last week. I think that would be a fantastic story. $51 with a sporting bet. No better bet than a sporting bet. The favourite, uh, as we mentioned, Fiorente at $9. Uh, Mount Athos, nine fifty. dollars Dino, third favourite at $13. The 2013 Melbourne Cup. Tuesday, the 5th of November, comes around quickly. It's going to be a great day out at Flemington. 3AW will be there live. Sam McClure, you'll be out there for 3AW as I will well. Be. I have a fantastic day tomorrow. Good punting, everyone. And thanks for tuning in to 3AW.com.au.